I've been teasing it for a week. I teased it on Tuesday's show. It's time. It's time to expand. And, and I, I, Chris and I talked about it. I've talked with my guy, Torg, about it. With expansion does not come bullshit, right? You don't expand and just start adding shows. Like, it's got to be the right show. And honestly, I got to fucking like the people that are on it. Like, I got they got to entertain me or else why am I putting it on, on with my show? My favorite Colum radio personality in Columbus, Torg. He's launching a show, man. Are you excited? Let's do it. I'm really excited, man. A little nervous, a little nervous because I'm new to the podcast game, you know, uh, yeah. used to being in a big studio, but I'm really excited. I'm excited to be unfiltered and no bullshit. Just talk whatever you want. Talk sports with a bunch of dudes. It, it's awesome. So I've known Torque for a while now and he, we, you know, his son trains, trained with where my son trains and I even worked with his son a little bit and so, on some receiver stuff. And he used to just be like, damn, so you could say fuck whenever you want, huh? I was like, yep. <laughs> Cause you know, he's got to deal with all the regulations in the world. And and it was just like, I told him, I was like, you need to do it, man. You, it's the most liberating thing in the world. Just say fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is sometimes when, you know, and I do a morning show here in Columbus, me and my partner, Jerry, who will be, we're trying to get him on the podcast uh, week one. But sometimes we'll end a segment and go, oh, shit, are we going to get, are we going to get like a talk until like you got a minute? Yeah. And in this case, I don't have to worry about anything. Now, I'm not going to, you know, threaten Desmond Howard or anything like that. But yeah, it'll be, it'll be easy peasy. And I don't yeah. swear to swear anyway, so. No doubt. But you know what? Yeah. If it slips, it slips. And no Absolutely. one's getting in trouble. <laughs> Absolutely. So I want to talk about the show. And I, I want to dive into that story in a minute. Because, you know, me and Desmond don't really see eye to eye. And I know you don't either. No, I don't. <laughs> but I, I'm actually, we'll just, we'll talk about it briefly. I know you're going to be able to dive into it deep when within your show. But talk to me about OV. Ohio versus everyone. It's an Ohio sports show. Talk to me about the concept and, and what you're what you're planning on doing. Well, we're going to start, you know, what moves the needle. Buckeye football, Browns football, Bengals football, anything Ohio-driven. Buckeye basketball, obviously, that's kind of slipped in popularity. Blue Jackets are awful. So, <laughs> I mean, what are you going to say there unless there's a big trade? But just everything Ohio sports, big national stories like you touch on in Menace to Sports. If it's a big national story, we touch on it. We're going to bring on celebrities. Merkers like, I'll call Dion. I'll get John Smoltz on. I'll get Maddox on. So he's like chomping at the bit. Have you seen that uh, that gif that people put of Michael Jackson eating the popcorn when he's responding oh, yeah. to people? Oh, yeah. Dude, I was I was like that th this holiday because it's it's Matt Finkus, Kent Merker, Sam Grooms, and myself. And sometimes it'll be all four of us. Sometimes it might be me and Merker. Sometimes me and Sam. Finkus is like on a tropical island, like, you know, three times a month. So we'll try to get him as much as possible. But these guys are just going at it through these texts. And I'm just like, get the popcorn out. These guys oh, yeah. are going at each other, just talking shit. You know, it's it's, you know, it's a lot of shit talking, uh, former athletes, telling stories, radio stories, athlete stories, behind the scenes. I mean, Merker played 17 years in the major leagues, man. 17 years. He played for everybody. So, you know, and you know Finkus with Ohio State. I mean, he's still top five in sacks. Yeah. So, a lot of football, a lot of bullshit, a lot of stories. Going to try to get celebrities on and just have fun, man. Just be something kind of like what you guys are. You're something yeah. different. Just something different to entertain people. I think that's the key is keep people entertained. That's it. Entertain people. Unfiltered, real. That's yeah, it, right? Absolutely. Unfiltered and real. So, we're. I'm like really fake. excited about it. What did you say? I don't like fake people. So no, it, it'll God. be real. No doubt. And for those of you that don't know, you're going to get to know him. If you don't know Matt Fink, is fucking as real as they come. Kent Merker, you'll never question what he's thinking because he's going to tell you. He will. It's, he will. And, and Torg is, is is I mean, all four of you are like that. It's going to be really, really awesome. I see little uh, so, Kirby's kind of cut out on my uh, shoulder here. I'm going yeah, to have to him when we do the show. I see you got a little Kirk Herbstreit back there. You big fan? Big, uh, big, big fan time, of yours? Big time. Little Herbie. Little Herbie. It's he's little like, Herbie. He's like Jimmy Cricket behind me. You know, he's kind of a you know, little Herbie. <laughs> well, for those of you who don't know, and I'm not going to dive into the story because I promised Tor could do a whole week's worth of episodes on it, but was on 97 won the fan, said something about Desmond Howard should get off TV yeah, or die. It. I tweeted it, yeah. Tweeted it. Just a tweet. I don't yeah. know if anyone's been on Twitter, but there's people that like say they want to like rape and kill children and nothing. It's like, okay, yeah. moving on. It's just Twitter. Tor sent out one tweet and they they try to take my man's whole career away because Desmond, yeah, 
Desmond's feelings were hurt, Torg. How could you hurt his feelings? Uh, I think it might have hurt Herbie's feelings a little bit more than Desmond. You know, well, I, I heard Desmond was kind of sh- hurt by it or shook by it or whatever, but I never, he never talked to me. I reached out to him to try to talk to him because I kind of f- like, hey, man, if these really shook up about it, I don't know how people react to different things, right? Right. So, and it was all coming down. I mean, every time I'd go on the, now the people tweeting me, the listeners were, super supportive like it's a joke it's what they do he yeah. deleted it right away there's no harm and then what didn't help though his wife tweeted to me and then people started attacking his wife and oh, i yeah. think that was and i have no control over and you know like when you post something and you're going back and forth you get people that chime in and oh yeah go at other people so that's kind of what it was people and people in radio were guys i know in radio and Dude, my wife had a flat tire. I went to go pick up her car. And by the time I get the car back, I was like, holy crap, delete this. And just reading it, though, I was like, oh, my goodness. It just it went from in 20 minutes to nothing into holy crap. But when I would go to like SI.com or FoxSports.com, when Herbie made the comments, it was everywhere. And oh, yeah. all these national guys wanted to dry hump Herbie. So then it was just posted Fox Sports, ESPN. I mean, it was it was it was everywhere. So I was like the villain of all the sports. And so I'm in obviously recovery mode and I'm trying to make good with everybody. And I did try to I talked to Desmond's wife about it and I tried to contact him, but he just didn't want to talk to me about it. So I well, mean, so it, I never it, talked to the guy. I don't know. I mean, it was a joke and it is what it is. I don't think he's a very good broadcaster. I mean. He's awful. Yeah. So that, he's, that's where it's from. It was no hate or it wasn't racist or anything. It's just just bad. When you when Michigan has three losses and they're ranked 20th and the Buckeyes are the number one team in the nation, you can't be on a national show. You lose all credibility when you say Michigan for nine straight years, 10 straight years is better than Ohio State. To me, that's credibility. It is. And you and, and I, I don't agree with them a lot, but Kirk Herbstreet will pick against Ohio State. I mean, most national media members – just pick who they actually think is going to win. But I think man, he's a really good broadcaster. I think he's yeah, really he knowledgeable. Uh, the Thursday night stuff, I mean, I think he's trying to do a little too much yeah, with the yeah. NFL. And Al Michaels is just, he's on the tail end. But Herbie's a really good broadcaster. I mean, sure. and people, people hate on Herbie because they think that he should pick Ohio State. Like, he should be like Charles yeah. Woodson and Desmond Howard and all the Ohio State guys. Robert Smith. Joey Galloway, Herbie, when Spielman did it. Uh, none of the Ohio State guys are, you know, they went to Ohio State, but they're not, you know, acting like a clown show and Ohio State's going to win by 50. I mean, they're honest and you yeah. couldn't even tell. And as good as Joey Galloway was, I mean, I think Joey one time got traded for two first round picks from like Seattle to Dallas. Yeah. I mean, that's how good Joey, and I hear he can still run like a 4 4. I hear he's insane. Oh my God. But as good as Joey Galloway was, and for the younger, if you're 20 years old, you got to hit Google, and you probably wouldn't even know he went to Ohio State unless you, like, Googled where he went to school because he's that good at broadcast. You wouldn't even know where he went. A lot of these guys are like that. You would have for, like, if you're a – my kid's 17. He's watching game day or a pregame show. Matt Leiner got to Google where he played. And those are the good broadcasters. If you're watching it you're a young viewer and you don't know where that dude went to college because he shows no bias – that's a that's a guy who's got credibility, right? It is. No, it definitely is. And you know what's funny? Be on the coaching side of it, Tor, is you know you're obviously at work five thirty in the morning until ten at night, almost every day in season, certainly. And these broadcasters come in town for big games. You know they show up, they interview the head coach, ask about the team, and most of them. I mean, it doesn't take you long. Most of them show up at on Friday, maybe noon, interview the head coach, go out to a walkthrough, then go 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 get dinner, go to their hotel. And there's a select few, and Joey Galloway's one, where you, you, sh- I show up to work at five thirty on Friday, and a mo- the motherfucker's sitting in my office watching film, and I'm like, "What's up, Joey?" And yeah. he's like, and then he starts asking like deep questions, like, "Yo, why on third down do you do this?" Like, you know, he is really, really studying, like he's actually putting the work in. He is. And other guys are like, you know, they're they're pretty, they talk well, and and they played football twenty years ago, and so they can kind of just find their way through it. Then you have some guys that actually work. And no, so- it, it, and and he's considered the best, but Aikman has gotten into that habit where you just generalize and 
he took it to the outside and couldn't make the cut there or a bad angle on a tag. But he's really not telling you why it happened or the formation or getting the guys who are really good will explain to people what happened. Where was the breakdown in the play? No doubt. And they study the game. I mean, that was, I, I talk about it on my show all the time. Urban Meyer, he had the wherewithal to eventually let go, but his problem was he was operating as an offensive coach in about 2015 and 16 with the knowledge base of a coach who hasn't studied the game since like 2002. And it was like, that, that doesn't work. Like the game has evolved and I I watch him now urban on TV. Now when he breaks things down, I'm like, dude, you still haven't, you're still not watching football. Like, (laughs) like you don't get me wrong. The guy knows he's probably forgotten more football than everyone in the world has ever learned. So he still knows a lot, but he'll he'll say things that I'm like, ooh, maybe 15 years ago. Not anymore, though. <laughs> don't you don't you wonder from a coaching side too if that's happening with Bill Belichick and guys like that? Oh, if the game's for passing. sure. I'm a Vikings fan. I could tell the game was passing Mike Zimmer by two years before it did. Of yeah. Holly was calling defense. You could see these guys get stuck in their ways. Yeah. And you get in Mike McDaniel of the Dolphins, an innovator, and different guys will come up with plays, misdirection plays where you're not even prepared for. Bill Belichick to me looks like a guy. Now I'm not, I'm not one of those. Oh, they need to fire him, move on. But I think he's a different, definitely a guy, and we'll see if he's not. He, he will or not because he's a little older. If he'll adjust how he does things to win, a lot of it has to do with the quarterback. I mean, their quarterback yeah. plays awful. Oh, absolutely. But you, you, another great example, Jimbo Fisher. I mean, yep. he's got a $70 million check because he just wouldn't let go. Like he, he yeah. had to be involved. The game passed him by and he urban urban made a decision after 2016, the 31, nothing to Clemson. He fired both coordinators, brought in Ryan day and Kevin Wilson. And basically told me, he was like, Hey, I'm out. Like I'm out. I'm out. I can't do this. Like I, I, I realized that I acknowledge that I'm going to be the CEO and head coach. I'm going to bring these guys in and, and you guys are going to run the offense. And I think most coaches, there's a little, you got to, when ego's involved, it's tough to do. And it's hard, too, when you're a team and you lose your staff. I mean, they were losing their staff. Guys were going to different jobs, and you're constantly yeah. trying to find a guy who can match that. And that's a hard thing to do when someone's cherry-picking your defensive coordinator, someone's taking your offensive coordinator, and then you got to try to find a guy while everything's going on right now. We've seen in college football where they're hiring staffs and – Michigan State's taking Minnesota's defensive coordinator, and this guy's going there, and Syracuse is hiring this guy, and and Alabama's keeping, you know, this guy's going here, and you're kind of in playoff mode like Urban was in big bowl mode. And yeah. you're probably preparing for, again, oh, crap, I got to hire an offensive coordinator because this team, I got to hire a defensive coordinator. So that kind of catches up when you don't hire the same level of talent when yeah. it comes to coaching that you lost. And, and I've always said – That's what makes Nick Saban great. Like Urban Meyer, you look at both of his, you know, he's had really two chapters, right? I know he had the Utah Bowling Green, but he had Florida, Ohio State. Both scenarios, I mean, fast track to success. Both scenarios, 2008, Charlie Strong leaves, Dan Mullen leaves. He brings in some coordinators that were really not great hires. Program falls apart. 2014, we win it all at Ohio State. Tom Herman leaves. He brings in... Tim Beck and Ed Warner. And it's like, I forgot about those two guys. Oh, and then it just fell <laughs> apart. It was like, yeah, what Nick Saban's strength is he, I, I he IDs a problem. He'll fire a uh, fire a coach in a minute and then he'll, he'll bring in a, a solution, which I think is what's what, what Ryan's kind of done, right? He fired Greg Schiano, brought in Jeff Halfley, made a mistake with Kerry Combs, fired him, brought in Jim Knowles. Like the great head coaches can do that. They, they identify it and they say, I need to make a great hire. This is more important than anything else we got going on. And that's what makes Saban so great. He barely ever misses when he hires guys. And look at guys who have been there. I mean, Sark has resurrected. I don't know how many times this season when I'm I'm betting and I'm talking to some guys about it, like, do you like Texas or not? Oh, Sark is going to yeah. – I don't trust Sark. And he's resurrected his career. Look at Lane Kiffin. I mean, yeah. people – and and you know what? I'm, I'm one. I thought Lane Kiffin did a pretty damn good job at USC w- with what he was given, right? Yeah. I thought yeah. he did a better job than Sark, actually. I mean, he had a uh, few scholarships, still won football games, still was successful, then went to Alabama and kind of resurrected his career, and look what he's done so far. Because yeah. I don't think he's going to stay at Ole Miss. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, it's one of those things where 
I mean, he lost his defensive coordinator two years ago, DJ Durkin, because, and he came out and said it. He was like, well, when, I mean, when they're offering this and we can't offer that, like, what do you, what am I supposed to do? Yep. It's like, it, it comes down to resources. I mean, he's, he's supposed to beat Bama, but he can't pay like Bama. Well, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. and, and, but to be honest with you though, look at the big 10 for an example. And you wonder why it was a little down this year and look at teams, the Purdue's, the Indiana's, they have the money to yeah. buy because money talks. If you go to a big name coach and say, Hey, we'll throw you 11, $12 million. Some guys will take the money. Yeah. And those teams aren't willing to, those schools aren't willing to commit the budget and the money, not only for the head coach, but for the assistant coaches, if you're PJ Fleck in Minnesota, how does your defensive coordinator go to Michigan state? Right. How are you getting, what is PJ Fleck making like seven, 8 million a year? Oh yeah. Pay He's those a, guys a million and a half. Pay those guys. That's why Ohio yeah. state. I remember talking to Gordon Gee and Gene Smith <laughs> on our show. And both those guys said, there'll never be a day. And uh, there'll never be a day in Ohio state where we pay million dollar assistance. <laughs> they both said that. Yeah. And they were both. And then urban came in and changed it. You know, from what I was told when urban negotiated that deal, he said, no, we're paying coaches. Cause yeah. it gets, you can't pay coaches the way Tress paid coaches. No, you can't do no. that because you won't win. Trestle was no. successful, but you, when you're Purdue, you got to pay people. When you're Indiana, you got to pay people. And if you don't pay people, you'll win four games in the Big Ten. There's no doubt, and it, and and I think Urban knew this, and he he honestly transformed Gene's thoughts on it because I I've told the story before after my second year at Ohio State. You know, I was so young, I was kind of Urban's, I was his GA. I've known him since I was born, basically. So I was like the the one assistant he'd never worried about, like as far as like leaving and taking a job, he's like, no, almost like that's my nephew. Like he can't, he can't go anywhere. Yeah. I won't let him. And after my second year, like my, my group was way better in 2013 than they were, were in 2012. And I never, I never was going to go and say, coach, I want to raise like that would have been a brow beating. I was not going to subject <laughs> myself to that. But when he, he gave me a, like a $50,000 raise and I was by far the, I mean, I think I was making half, the second lowest coach on staff. Oh, really? Okay. And, and he came in and, and said, Hey, I'm going to give you this raise. Um, not because I want to give it to you. Um, Gene Smith came to me. and was like, Hey, I don't think this looks good optically that he makes such little money and it's not good for <laughs> recruiting. So let's, let's bump him up a little bit. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. So, so thank Gene then, or do I say thank you to you? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll take the credit, but really it's, yeah. it's Gene, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, I'm excited, man. This is going to be great. Talk to me about the show. Here's what I'm most excited about is one, you're one of the most connected media personalities in Columbus. So the people you can reach and grab and pull in for this show, it was already immense. Then you add a guy like Kent Merker. You mentioned names, John Smoltz, all these huge, huge names in sports. Matt Finkus on the Buckeye side of things can grab just about anybody. And then obviously my, you know, my connections with, with the more recent teams can pull people. So this is going to be, this is going to be a really badass show. Talk to me about just kind of, schedule when can they when can they listen find you watch three o'clock we're going to be on the menace to sports page so if you're already I, and i don't know how it works zach you can kind of fill in the blanks but if they're already subscribing to you we're just going to pop up on the same channels right so oh, yeah if you're on menace to sports we're going to pop up every day three o'clock on the youtube channel menace to sports already there so subscribe and like it and we it'll be the same platform same distribution so it's super easy for people to find because it's already got a dis, uh, established network that's what's cool about it. when i talk to people about this one and i didn't say anything about it i kind of hinted to it and people could see in the logo when yeah. we put like i i tweeted one day like the smart people are getting it and i think they thought i was talking about my former partner and yeah. I was really, because if you can look on that OVE pocket, it says menace to sports on top. I said, the smart people are getting it. And every guy that I talked to, because we got some local small businesses who are advertising. Every guy I talked to, I told them it'll be on the menace to sports platform. And every dude lost their shit. I mean, yeah. they were like super excited. Were, no effing way. And I'm like, yeah, man, as we're doing it. Because what you've built, and I'm not trying to, you know, but. What you've built is pretty damn amazing. It would take me three to four years to do something like this, even with those guys doing it every day of building an audience. And you've already built that. So it's to me, it's awesome. And thank you for like, you know, working with me on it because it's already something that I don't have to do. It's kind of already there. And then hopefully the new people who are listening to me will listen to you because it's a damn entertaining show. And I think it it works good together. I really I do. do so, too. You know, we'll hit football. 
Good time. You know, I wish we started this in August so we'd have a full football season. But the offseason in the NFL and college football, man, there's always someone fucking up. There's always yeah. someone doing stupid shit. Oh, yeah. Now, we're stupid, but we get to comment on it. So, right. I mean, it, it will be football heavy. Merker has great stories. If you want to hear the best, and I don't even know if there's any good baseball podcasts out there to do like 20 minutes on stories of baseball. And and Merker is a agent too. He's a player agent. So mm. he knows all these dudes in Major League Baseball. He knows all the GMs. We'll try to get as many Reds and the team formerly known as the Indians, the Guardians, as many as those guys on. I think the outlook looks a little brighter for the Reds than it does the Guardians. I think the Guardians are in full. All right, the best manager in baseball is gone. Yeah. Our owner is selling part of the team. And I'll get into this in the podcast. It, it's kind of an old topic, but I really believe in my heart of hearts, and you can't talk me out of it, that he changed the name for a money grab. Yeah. If you want to change the name, do what Washington did and call it the Washington football team. You notice he did a full year. We're getting rid of the Indians. You can still buy yep. cheap Wahoo stuff in the, and yep. then he does a full year right before Christmas. Oh, we're changing to the guardians. Oh, I'm going to sell the team. Oh, it's yep. going to be a five-year buy on this. I think the guy's from Philadelphia. Oh, we're going to give him five years to raise the money. And then I'm going to lower the payroll. I'm going to get rid of the manager and I'm going to bury this team. And we're going to do the price. Shane Bieber is going to be traded. He might be traded by the time we air this thing. Uh, <laughs> We're going to get rid of all our top dudes and we're going to go young. And then when I get rid of this program or I get rid of this team, it'll be a dumpster fire for the new owner. And it'll be a, the new owner's going to have to build this thing up. To me, it would be I'm drinking straight bottled bleach if I'm a Guardians fan and I'm a Whoa. Reds fan in that division. I'm pretty damn happy no one else outside of St. Louis is making any moves right now. Hell yeah. So well, Merker, Merker will fill you in if you're a baseball fan. And I think every Thursday, and I don't know who I'm going to do it with, Zach, but I have to do a segment on professional wrestling. Yeah, I'm a big wrestling fan. I got some buddies who work for the WWE. Uh, I don't, though, they're still kind of with the new corporate structure. I don't know if they'll be able to come on and be able to say what they want. It's kind of the texting conversation is different than what they can say on air, big corporation. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm looking to do, do a little wrestling. I'm kind of a casual, used to be a diehard wrestling fan. And we'll do a little segment of wrestling. We'll do anything on the show, man. We'll have, I know Frank Caliendo is going to come on the first week. Uh, going to work on getting top comedians on to just bullshit and do their their shtick. So, man, uh, and I don't put on guys just to put on guys. I think you're that way too. Is yeah. I don't put on a guy just to talk Buckeyes if they're not going to entertain. And we've yeah. kind of been that way with our show. That's why we put your you you come on. Zach Bourne comes on the radio show. Finkus comes on the radio show. Hell Wagon. We put on just guys who are really good at what they do. And that's kind of what we'll do here. We're not going to put on guys just to put on dudes, you know, put yeah. on guys, you know. Absolutely. That's, that's wasting time. That's wasting people. Yeah. No filler, right? We just just get, give us some quality shit. That's what, yeah. that's, what, that's what the people want. And we might go 30 minutes. We might go an hour and a half. Who knows? I mean, there's no – we only have two spot breaks right now. So we're rolling. Yeah. Unless Absolutely. you tell us, hey, we got more. We'll do. We'll do more. We'll do more. Shit, as it sells, you you will go longer. <laughs> Absolutely, money talks. There Maybe is no tour. doubt. We'll go forever. Well, I, I did want to kind of end end this kind of preview teaser episode with just kind of your background. I mean, I know it because I know you, but just just for the, the people that watch my show that maybe haven't haven't listened to you on the radio, just give them kind of your background, where you came from, how you got here, and and tell us about Torg. Yeah, I uh, grew up in St. Paul, Minnesota, went to now Brown College. It was Brown Institute of Broadcasting, but it really is called Brown College. So I can say I got a degree from Brown College. That's legit. <laughs> uh, my first job was at KFAN, one of the biggest sports stations in the country. Got to work on some Vikings radio broadcast. Just met tons of cool people. Went to Green Bay, worked there at WNFL. I don't know if you know who Ray Scott is. The Hall yeah. of View. He worked with Summerall. It was Summerall's yeah. first TV partner. Worked with Ray Scott and just, I mean, we got everybody on that show. I was a 21-year-old kid and Bobby Knight's doing an hour with us. I mean, we got whoever we wanted because Ray was such a big personality. And then from there, I went to Sports Fan Radio Network out of Vegas. And I'm producing at this time. And I was a go-getter, man. I uh, broke stories. I broke Dion signed with the 49ers. I broke that Evander Holyfield was coming back to fight. 
Because remember when our van, oh, yeah. uh, Vander had the hole in the heart? Oh, yeah. And I was just having a conversation with him. He goes, oh, I'm training. I'm coming. Like, what? He goes, I'm coming <laughs> back. I'm training. I go, can I go with that? He goes, yeah, you can report it. No one knows. I go, no shit. He goes, yeah, no one knows. I go, well, let's <laughs> go on the air and talk about it. So I put him on the air. I think Tyson was fighting someone and, you know, broke that story. And from there, I went to Chicago to work on one-on-one -on -one sports. I think it might be Sporting News Radio now, or it's morphed into different things. And then went out to Phoenix, works, and, and then worked CBS Sports. Went back to Phoenix, started doing rock radio, on-air stuff. Came here in Columbus, working at 97.1 for about six, seven years. Working at, uh, you know, WLVQ, QFM 96 now for, hell, going on 11 years. It'll be 11 years this spring with Jerry Elliott. So, I mean, I've been lucky. I've worked with some great dudes. I mean, I worked with, you know, Mike is a talented dude, Rickard Adi. Work with Jerry Elliott. I mean, they carry me. So, I've I've been very lucky of working with great people and talented people. And now doing this, man, every day, Monday through Friday, 3 o'clock, man. I'm looking forward to it. And, and, and I'm excited, man. And I'll say this. Show one will be very different than show 60 and show 60 will be very different. You know, this Zach, I mean, oh. I, it, it takes you a while to get used to it, work with people to, you know, get, get the, uh, get the flow with people, get continuity with people working with people, you know, cause I've, I've interviewed Merker. I've interviewed, I, I did a podcast with Finkus for a couple of years. So I think me and Finkus will be easy. And then I did a radio show with Sam when I worked at 95.5 for a half a minute when I was still doing QFM 96. So I, I think the chemistry will be good. We'll pick it up right away. I know how to do this. Yeah. You know, maybe There's not no at problem. first, but we'll figure it out. There's no doubt about it. it, it, it it's funny. I, I put out, I went to Disney World last week. And so I, I pre-scheduled kind of some throwback episodes and I'm watching them. I'm like, damn, I, it doesn't even sound the same, look the same, nothing. It's just wild. <laughs> When, oh, it grows. when me and Jerry, uh, we were doing our 10th anniversary, 10th year anniversary show, right? And the boss says, pull clips from as far back as you can. And I'm listening to these full shows and I'll go, how the hell did we last 10 years? I mean, I, right. I, I listen to the beginnings <laughs> and go, Ooh, I'm not good. You know, yeah. that's, that's not good. Jerry's well, good. I just meant me not good. Well, practice makes perfect, right? As you do something every day, you get better and better and better at it. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited for it, man. So, so first episode, 28, 3 o'clock, live on YouTube. Yep, yep. YouTube and will go Obviously, 29. it will be everywhere podcasts are. It's going to be on our feed, so it's going to be at, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, anywhere you can get a podcast. The OVE podcast will be there for your listener listenership, your listening Absolutely. pleasure. It's going to be fun, man. It'll be a good time. I'm, I'm excited, excited for it. So on. you You jump on, talk some football from time to time if you want. Hey, whenever you want, I'm on there. Absolutely. And you're right, so we'll be at three o'clock on right? Thursday. You're going to be at Yogi's Friday, right? Yogi's Friday. Uh, I'm live at noon. I just found out. I didn't even know the time um, for my show. Uh, we were going to do a five o'clock show, but there's a bunch of bowl games on. So we're going to do just regular time slot at noon on Friday and probably hang out there, you know, well after. Um, if it's anything like the other, the other live show we did, it was a hell of a turnout. So I'll text you. I'll text you after I'm done and probably head up there. That sounds good. Well, we yeah. will be there All on right. Friday. Torg's coming with the OVE podcast on Thursday, 3 o'clock. Don't miss it. Set your alarms on your phones. And if you already have the alerts on YouTube, then it'll all ding and let you know he's going live. 3 o'clock every day, Monday through Friday, starting Thursday, the 28th. Torg, we appreciate you, man. I'm excited hey, for thanks, it. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. All right. We'll see you Thursday.